Good evening, Miracle Life Family Church, and welcome to our faith boost. So glad that you've taken time to join us for another wonderful time in God's Word. Let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for today. Thank you that, Lord, may you fill us with your knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom, and uh, may we get also spiritual understanding as we look into God's Word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as we heard last week from Pastor Benjamin introduce that we're going to look into the Gospels. And today uh, we are looking into the book of Matthew and with a particular focus on the parable of the sower. And this is where we're going to spend more time. You know, as you get prepared with your Bible, get your Bible, it's always important. Get a notebook, it's always good to jot some pointers as you listen. It's a good habit to, to develop. So let's get into God's word and we'll look at from uh, Matthew chapter 13. We'll look at 1 to 23. Of course, it's a long passage, but we'll read only the few verses and um, and then um, we'll pick it up from the lesson. So turn with me to Matthew 13, verse 1. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. Great multitudes were gathered to him. So that he got into the boat and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. Picture that in your head. Then he spoke many things to them in parables. So he didn't speak one parable at this particular time. He spoke many parables. Behold a sower. Now this is a parable of a sower. He went, a sower went out to sow. And as he sow, some seeds fell by the wayside. Now the way they used to sow those days, you had to use your hands. You know, so as you scatter your seed, then some fell on the wayside. And um, some five, some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth. And they immediately sprout up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched because they did not have root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang out and choked them. But some fell on good ground, and you did a crop, some a hundred fold, some sixty, some thirty. Verse 9. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, so verse 10 to 18, he gives us the purpose of the the parable, because they had asked him, what is the purpose of the parable? Why do you speak to them in parables or stories? It's not The, the idea is, wasn't to conceal the truth. The idea was to express the truth. But to those that are ready to receive, to those that are ready to hear, and so let's get into it, and uh, let's look at these four type of soul that Jesus uh, says in this scripture. And this Four so the four soils that Jesus is talking about here represents our hearts. And the seed represents God's word. The sower it doesn't tell us who the sower is, but we know that somebody went to preach God's word and people's hearts now had to be uh, to receive it or not to receive it. So let's start with number one, the one who is the this in verse four. It says, He saw some seeds fell by the wayside and the babes came and devoured them now this is a heart that is 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 uh, a wayside represents a heart that is hardened you know the soil you know wayside is where people have been you know trooping and working on that place for a long time and it becomes hard so much that when you plant the seed it cannot do anything. It just sits as if it's still sitting on a pavement, so to speak, in our time. And you cannot do anything. Now, remember that the, there's nothing wrong with the seed. The seed has got everything. It has got the potential to do everything that it's supposed to do. But the problem is that the heart where it is fallen or the place where it is fallen, it cannot produce so this shows us about people who are able to, people who is, they, they, they hear God's word, but their hearts are hardened. Now, I want to just pause there because sometimes we want to think about it from the negative side of things only to the non-believer, so to speak. But you can, you can be a believer and there are certain areas of 
God's word that speaks to you and you still find it very difficult to receive that. For example, I can give you an example. Some people find it very difficult to believe God's word about tongues. That's you had it in your heart. Just take time and listen to God's word and receive. So it's not just necessarily those who haven't heard the gospel, those who are uh, uh, not accepting the gospel, but it's also those who are in the church and they don't get the full um, counsel on a certain subject and they just reject it. So you want to dig deeper. So don't harden your heart. Number two is the ones in verse 5. It says, some fell on stony places where they did not have much. Earth. Now when you plant seed on the stone, you find it has a bit of earth in it, a bit of soil around it, but immediately it sprung out, the sun comes out, the roots cannot go any deeper. It gets squashed and it withers away. And these are people that, in this represents our hearts also, the heart that, you know, you receive God's word, you are excited about it. The message gets, it fires you up. You know, you get in, you hear these type of comments in churches like, wow, that was a powerful word, powerful sermon. And, and there's excitement in there. The, the, the messenger is appealing to them, you know, in whatever area it is. But there is no commitment. There, there, there's, no, there's no earth around them, their hearts cannot receive be you. They, 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 they easily give out. The fire dies out. It's like you start a fire and suddenly it gets choked up. It gets quenched, if you like. Dies. Lack of commitment. So they don't dive into the subjects deeper. They quickly get into other things. You know, today if you're like, oh man, I should start doing something in my church and there's excitement. The messages, stay, they stay, their hearts are stirred, but there's no th follow through, so to speak. Now the third one is, we see that also in um, verse 7. It says, and some fell among thorns. Among thorns. Now the ones who fell among thorns represents a heart that they, they, they receive God's word. They, 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 they are excited. They are committed. In fact, these ones, you see them. In church, you see this heart where you see them committed in church. They are Christians. They are in church all the time, day in, Sunday in, Sunday out. They are committed. They are doing things. But something else chokes them. The external things. What are these external things? The things of the world. So it, it chokes them. You know, life, uh, economy, as as it becomes tougher, it chokes them. All the pursuits of, of, of worldly things, you know, chokes them, you know. They, they, they're excited, but there are these external things that chokes them, so they cannot uh, produce. And then the last one that we see is in verse 8, on good ground. Some fell on good ground. Now, those that fell on good ground, you see them also producing three types. There are those who are producing 30, there are those who are producing 60, and there are those who are producing 100 fold. So these ones are good hearers. They receive the word, they are listening, and they begin to produce. But the thing is this. Some people who are producing 100, the hearts that are producing 100 fold, these have the commitment. They are not distracted. Their hearts are receptive to God's word. They go as much, I want to get to know God better. They go beyond the, the, the status quo or the ordinary and they make it to a point where they produce a hundredfold. The commitment is hundred plus. It's given. And there are those who are also producing. They are producing, but they are not producing to their full capacity because the seed can still produce a hundredfold, but they are producing 30 and they are producing 60. Now, those are the four types of soil that we heard from Jesus. Now, as I, as, as I come to the end, I want to ask you a question, and I want you to think about that question very, very well.
In what ways can you improve your hearing? Because this always is representing a heart of how you hear. And that's why the, the last verse is, let, he who has ears, let him hear. In what ways can you improve your hearing? Two, a question to consider is, in what ways or in, in what ways do these four kinds of soils represent or describe your heart? In what ways? Find yourself there and say, am I on the stony ground? Am I on the thorny? Am I good ground? Can I produce? Can I move from producing 30 to 60 to 100? Check yourself and see where you are and ask God to help you in how you hear so that you can produce a hundredfold. It's God's desire that we all produce a hundredfold. I pray that you will produce a hundredfold. You have a great week. We'll see you next week. God bless you. Ciao. So glad you were part of this Faith Boost broadcast. What we'd ask you to do is go to YouTube and subscribe to the Miracle Life channel on Facebook, like the Miracle Life Facebook page. That way you'll receive notification when there's new content. We've got content like this that's regularly coming out to bless you, to help you. Also notifications that will help you in your walk with God, what's happening at the church and things like that. And with notifications, it actually gets pushed to you and it's a great way to be reminded. So go to the YouTube channel, subscribe and go to the Facebook page and like it. God bless you.